guys and gals, how we doing? It's me, Joe Cyrus, back here from the Music Factory Studios. Guess what I bought? I picked up the ARM-based Pinebook Pro from Pine64. It's a great, great little laptop. If you're looking for like a Chromebook replacement. So as you can see here, this is an SOC system on a chip. So basically it's a single card that runs an RK399 rock chip ARM processor, a 64 gig EMMC module, and as you can see here, this is the NVMe cable plug that we're going to hook the NVMe extension to the system on a chip. Now, system on a chip works a little different than what you're used to. You're used to separate RAM modules, CPU, hard drive modules, things of that nature. In a system on a chip, it's all contained, as you can see, in that little, what looks like a PCI card in a way, but shaped differently. It has the CPU, the RAM, the drive, and everything on that one system on a chip. But I want to install this Inland 256 gig SSD. Now, funny enough, the only tutorial I could find online was of an earlier module that had been produced, and the tutorial didn't work for me. Now, you've got the PCBA side, which goes into the motherboard or the SOC right there as you can see the other side says SSD on it and it goes into the module that you buy from Pine64 for an NVMe drive now interestingly enough you just flip this little black lever up a little bit and slide the connector into it now here was the issue the older tutorial i was looking at was showing me to fold the nvme connector which is paper thin by the way over in a couple different ways and it just didn't work because this newer one is really just plug and play it's it's pretty quick now the one issue i had was the screws that came with the nvme extension did not hold down the SSD. So, as you know, if you've installed an NVMe drive, these little screws right here just won't work. So what I did was, I had one of those USB-C extension NVMe drive containers. So I opened it up and stole the screw out of it and it worked perfect. As you can see, this little pine book's a great little laptop. It works great. It does everything I want it to do. I mean, it's the perfect Chromebook replacement. It has Manjaro KDE, which uh, I wish they would have went with XFCE. I ran XFCE off of a SD card and it worked really well. KDE, a lot of the widgets just don't work. So that's annoying. And it's just a lot better experience on XFCE. So. In my opinion, XFCE would be the better choice, but I get it. KDE Plasma is a lot fancier looking, and if you were moving from another operating system, KDE is the fanciest of the Linux desktops. But basically what I did was I stole the NVMe lockdown screw from my little USB-C dock that I had, and I installed it. It's pretty simple. You basically just screw it all down. I used an Inland 256 gig NVMe by four M.2 drive. It worked perfectly fine. But here's the thing about the little PCB extension cable that you get from Pine64. So the tutorial I was looking at said it went in basically upside down. So you had to fold it a couple different ways that's not true. It basically, you just flip up the PCB side, plug it in with where it says PCBA facing upward. Then plug in the SSD side into the NVMe and you're done. It's that simple. And I had no issues after that. It runs at full speed, no problems. I've checked it with GNOME disks. That's the only real utility that I could find that would benchmark a disk for me easily on the ARM platform. 
Now, the interesting part is Apple is moving their Macs to the same AARCH64 platform, or as it's known, Arch64. It has nothing to do with Arch Linux at all, so don't confuse the two. But Arch64 is an architecture for ARM-based solutions and SOCs. Apple has something special, though. Apple gave ARM money when ARM was at its lowest point. And what this gave Apple was the ability to have the instruction set and modify the instruction set as they see fit. Okay? Now, what that does is it allows it allows Apple to manufacture their A-series chips and then modify the instruction set to work as they see fit. Now, they use probably the vast majority of the ARM Arch instruction set, but they have proprietary instructions that they will use that no one else will have. That's why they have such great performance on things such as iPad Pro, iPhone, and others. Now, as you can see, the one thing you have to do is get the trackpad cable unhooked and out of the way. That really helps when you're installing this, and then you can just plug it back up and using some of the tape that's inside of the Pinebook Pro. Take the trackpad cable back down away from the NVMe, and that way the NVMe doesn't maybe cut the cable. One of the big downsides of this machine is the trackpad. I'm not a fan of it. It works so much better on XFCE as well. I mean, it just does. <laughs> KDE and this trackpad don't work well together. As you can see, I tried to fold it like the tutorial I was looking at, and that just doesn't work. Basically plug the PCBA side into the SOC and the SSD side into the NVMe drive. It's real simple. Once you've done that, fold the little black clip back down, and you're done. That's it. It works. The little silver cable going across is the trackpad cable. I just taped it down out of the way, and it works fine. I'm getting full speed out of the, the, the SSD. It works perfectly well. I'm happy with it, and everything worked out just right for me. Okay, but as you can see, it's real simple. I was trying to plug it in upside down because of the tutorial was showing this in a few pictures, and I'm like, this can't be right because it was too short to fit. Now let's do some disc tests here real quick. This is GNOME Discs, and it has a benchmark inside of it. If you didn't know, now you do. <laughs> you can go to this additional partition options, go to benchmark partition, click start benchmark. Now here's the trick where it says sample size, 100 is what they say is the lowest you should use for an SSD. I've used as much as 500 and it gives you pretty much accurate performance. I'm getting a read speed of about one and a half to 1.6 gigs to an average write speed of about 800 to 900. So it works well, it's good for, if you're gonna do screen recording on the Pinebook Pro, this is the best way to do it. Tell something like Simple Screen Recorder to record to the NVMe drive and not the internal eMMC. And you'll be able to record just like you would on any other laptop with no issues, no problems, no nothing. You know, this is a six core RK399 ARM chip that has two high performance cores and four low power cores. So you're not going to be doing like Caden live sessions on it or anything, but it's a great way to use things like web browsers. I personally use Vivaldi and it has been solid, super solid. And I, I enjoy using Vivaldi. I had to install an extra set of codecs just to get like YouTube and a few things to work. But other than that, it works fine. Firefox works perfectly fine as well. Most of the things you normally see on, on Linux apps or app stores, I should say, are pretty much there. I've got things like Bash Top. It's not Bash Top any longer. It's now BPY Top. I have uh, H Top, G Top, Go Top, and Y Top all work perfectly fine in the terminal. Uh, let's see, what else do I have? All the music players that, that are your normal suspects are there, like uh, Pantheon Music, Strawberry Music, or Lollipop Music, not Strawberry Music, <laughs> Lollipop Music. 
Um, you have video players. VLC works. I don't like VLC on Linux. It doesn't work that well. I use the GNOME Videos app. It works really well. There's MPV. I use Nemo as my default file manager for KDE just because I like it better than Dolphin. The one issue I do have is blur and the noise in the KDE options. If you use them, you have issues. Also, if you choose any other global theme other than breeze or oxygen, you'll have constant K-Wing crashes. So the trick is to either use breeze and oxygen and then manually change the color and leave the plasma theme, you know, like the title bars and, and those type of things, leave those as breeze because breeze will follow whatever colors you have chosen. And then you can set up your look the way you want it. As you can see here, I'm using the oxygen theme with basically a theme called L-A-Y-A-N, lay in colors. And it works perfectly fine. I've had no K-Wing crashes. The one thing to remember is if you go into the compositor, leave it on OpenGL 2.0 because that's all the CPU supports. It doesn't support OpenGL 3.1. As far as I, I, I understand it, I have no crashes this way. I can use effects such as, you know, the magic lamp, minimizing, wobbly windows. I just can't use the blur. So pan frost is the name of the, 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 the blur driver and it doesn't work well. So you may want to consider that, but everything seems to work perfectly fine. Uh, another good idea is to have the K Vantel manager install. And here's the CPU architecture Four. you've got four low power cores, two high power cores, and it works perfectly fine and dandy. You know, I can't complain. I'm pretty happy with it for 200 bucks. I couldn't find a Chromebook that gives me this many options. Because if I needed to say, I don't know, edit a photo in GIMP, I could do so. Or if I needed to do who knows what that you can't do on a Chromebook or an Android tablet, I can actually do it on this. The screen looks great. It's actually really bright. I was not expecting it to be as bright as it is, but it's clear. I think it's an IPS panel. I could be wrong, but it doesn't seem to be a TM panel because colors aren't blurry and shifty and, yeah, you know. It looks good. The panel I got was really bright. I had no dead pixels, no nothing. As you can see here, here's the internal EMMC. And then here is our NVMe. I did format it to FAT32. That way I didn't have all of the issues with it being locked up and me not being able to write to it. And blah, blah, blah. It just works in FAT32 really well. LibreOffice is installed. This would be a great little little PC for like somebody that 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 has to type documents you know whether you're let's say a uh, a student in grade school or you know maybe a preacher in a church or something that, that likes to type out their sermons but doesn't want to spend a whole lot and wants something that's private unlike Microsoft Windows <laughs> which I like to call malware but uh as you can see here, this computer runs perfectly fine. Now, I was capturing this with a capture card. I was using the Avermedia Live Gamer Portable 2 Plus, which has an internal recorder. So it records directly to an SD card, which is less CPU taxing. That way I could show you the way the computer runs without a screen recorder running in the background. So I hope you enjoyed this and if you get a chance, head over to Pine64, check out the Pinebook Pro. It's a good option. FreeBSD runs on it. There's Ubuntu, Manjaro. I'm going to be doing some tutorials on this thing about how to install different operating systems and do it easily. And it's not as hard as you think. It's so vastly different though from say an Intel or AMD based laptop. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, thumbs up, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this, check out one of our other Linux videos and ask yourself, is ARM really the future now? Have a great day, y'all.